Morning guys. <clears throat> so we're gonna go for a quick garden tour. Um, there is a lot that has changed and a lot that has come up. Some stuff I've already harvested. Um, harvested all the radishes on the weekend. Harvested um, a bunch of spinach, um, some chicory, and processed all that stuff. Took all the cilantro out and created um, like a cilantro lime vinaigrette and froze that in little ice cube trays. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'm excited. So in here is where I pulled out the radishes. I did leave some down at the bottom. These are big Chinese white radishes. So they will continue to grow over the summer and get quite meaty. They'll be like a great big turnip carrot almost. Um, and when they're ready, I'll show you what they look like because they're kind of cool. And then I transplanted in a bunch of lettuce. Um, and on this side, Chamomile is just starting to bloom. I did pick some heads this morning for a cup of tea. And the Brussels sprouts are getting quite large on this side. I have more Brussels sprouts on the other side of the garden um, and they're not this big. So I don't know if it's just the soil here is better or what the deal is, but these guys are thriving. And then over here, the climbing beans. Haven't quite figured it out yet, like how to climb. Like I'll show you, this one here has. So this is what it looks like when they've figured it out. But these guys haven't quite yet. So what you do is just gently kind of keep reminding them where the stems like where their support is and they will eventually figure it out and start winding themselves around. We've got eggplants down below getting some darker leaves and some new leaves so that's a sign that they're happy and adjusting to their transplantation. We will be picking arugula soon and along here I've got the bok choy and the purple bok choy. Ooh, see this stuff here? This is wood sorrel. You can eat that. It's really lemony. It's like a lemony tart. It's pretty good. Got the tomatoes interspersed with climbing beans. There's another climbing bean. Threw a few sunflowers in. It is pretty chock full, guys. This is a uh, High intensity gardening. So we got beans. Down below there's Mizuna. I did pull out, see the size of these spinach, and like this one's going to seed, but that's kind of what I wanted. I want to collect the seed off of it. So I did pull out a bunch of the spinach and uh, like from this area, and there's new seedlings coming up. And yeah, I harvested some of the oregano the other day to dry it. The horseradish plant is looking quite bushy, so that's good. So, yeah, that's sort of this little bed along the shed. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll take you along the back of the fence there. Um, and this year, what I'm growing over there is squash and cucumbers and melon. So let's go take a little closer look. So put in two spaghetti squash. We've got another sunflower. I bought this one. I've never tried them before. They're Delectica squash. So that is a winter storage variety. I've got more climbing beans along here. These are melons. It's called a hammy melon. It's an Asian melon. Um, more climbing beans. We've got a butterfly milkweed beside a sage. And my sage has got flowers on it. Looks like it's going to bloom. That's kind of cool. 
And then a little further down the row, we have two times. One's a lemon thyme, one's a normal, like, culinary thyme. I did put in some straight eight cucumbers. And over here, I've got a Wisconsin pickling. I've got one I can't pronounce, it's a Middle Eastern cucumber. Um, another Wisconsin. And I did put in a couple of bush beans. So not all of them have germinated, but there's another one down here. And so, oh, and these are those other Brussels sprouts that look, they're not nearly as tall. It could have something to do with, see this mulch guys, the wood? That actually isn't good. When you have wood mulch, it, um, it will take nutrients from the soil to help break it down. And so those nutrients are then no longer available for your plants. So that might be what's going on there. I might need to take that out. But that is the row along the fence. That is squash, cucumbers, beans, and melons. Okay, this area over here along this fence is mostly peas and a couple of artichokes. So I'll just give you a little update on that. Artivan, Artivan the artichoke. And the peas are catching on to things. It might be hard to say, see because of all the green, but they are actually latching on to stuff. So that is exciting. The more they latch on, the higher they will go. So you kind of want to give them stuff to climb up. So yeah, this whole row is just peas. Down at the very end, I've got a potato in a pot. Um, this row we did some work on. So I've got my um, zucchinis planted out. We've got two tomato plants in and um, yeah, just some onions down at the end. This garlic is insane, you guys. It is like chest height on me. Here, I'll put the camera down and I'll show you. Yeah, like seriously, look at the height of this. That's nuts. I don't know if I planted soft neck or hard neck, so I guess we'll find out. If I don't get any scapes, then that means it's soft neck, um, and I will harvest it when the three leaves at the bottom turn brown. If I get scapes, I believe that means it's hard neck, and I cut the scapes off, and then I can harvest it at some point after that. <laughs> okay, these potatoes have come up really nicely. I'm growing two different types of potatoes. I'm growing Warba, which is supposed to be like a first early, and I'm growing Red Pontiac. Um, this bed here has a few brassicas in it that I was just kind of trying out. Um, these are kohlrabi. I've never grown a kohlrabi before, so I thought I would just try it and see how they grow and see if I like them, and then if they do, I'll grow more in the future. down here. Alright, <clears throat> beside the peppers we have a bed that has broad beans and we are starting to get broad bean flowers. Those are just like the, the buds of the flowers and we've got them on quite a few now. So I think they'll open this week um, and if that's the case I will uh, do a quick vlog and show you guys. So I've got a couple more sunflowers in here, um, and the plan with this is that there's squash, the squash will grow up to the lights, and the broad beans down below will just fill in nice and bushy, so that's the plan with that bed, and down this row I've got peppers, more peppers, so they're still kind of adjusting to life here. They don't look completely happy yet. I'd rather see darker green leaves, like those kind of leaves. These ones are kind of yellow and sunburnt. I think they'll be fine, but ideally, compare the difference between this pepper and this pepper. So see how green this one is and leafy and like that one just looks happy. These guys don't look as happy. So yeah, this bed is peppers. There's some quick greens in there, uh, purple bok choy, Mizuna, kale, 
So those will be out in at least, well, in about about this time, I would say the end of June, those are coming out, and then there will be going in um, some cabbage, and that'll grow right through until winter time. So that's it for this. Okay, let me just take you through the garden gate. I'll let you peek through while I attempt to open it. There we go. All right, the hotbeds. Take a look at these tomatoes. So this whole row is tomatoes in the big pots and peppers in the little pots down below. So we have a variety of peppers. Um, these four are jalapeno. And then, oh, the two down below are like a little Spanish, um, here, I'll hold the tag up, so maybe it's Aggie Chara Pita. So, anyways, I guess really tiny yellow peppers. Apparently it's like one of the most expensive peppers in the world because um, they're super tiny and like chefs love them. They're very fruity. Um, I did grow one last year. I only got a couple of peppers off of it, so this year I started them a lot earlier. We've got flowers on our tomatoes, which is kind of cool. Um, these peppers are the Jimmy Nardello. It's an Italian pepper, not too spicy. It's supposed to be a pretty prolific producer. I've never grown them before. We've got more tomatoes, some basil down below, lettuce leaf and basil. I did go in and top, see the little brown spot? I took the tops off of them, so that will encourage the plants to bush out. So you top your basil just like you top your peppers, or you, vice versa, if you've topped basil but you've never topped peppers, you can do the same thing to your peppers. And these are shishito peppers. And actually, I just wanted to show you, we do have a few peppers showing up. Look at this. There are jalapenos in there. Hello, little jalapenos. Jalapeno doing? I don't know what that was, but... Okay. So, yeah. Lemongrass and nasturtiums have finally come out. I planted them from seed. Got a few more up top here. Flat leaf uh, parsley and more basil. So that's it for this area. Okay, it was getting pretty windy out there, guys. So we're just gonna wrap up inside the garden shed. Um, just wanted to say thanks for coming along and looking at the garden again this week. And just kind of wanted to sort of let any of you guys who are new here know sort of why I'm doing this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who will say like, why bother? <laughs> like you can go to the grocery store and buy a squash. And that is true, you can. But ultimately I think this is my little way of doing my part for the planet. So if I can grow most of our vegetables and put things up for the winter, like our tomatoes and our peppers and our onions and our potatoes, then at least that's reducing our footprint a little bit. Um, you know, some of our stuff is not coming in from Mexico or California, being shipped here or flown here. So that's sort of my main reason. I mean, it's way healthier for us and it tastes better, but I'm trying to do my little part for the planet. And I think if we all do our little parts, it'll add up. So anyways, enough ramblings on. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.